So uh, we've got a really cool new material. We're gonna make some more materials really quickly, maybe expose some end parameters and, uh, for the end user, and then start throwing these in on objects. We can start texturing a little bit. And I know I'm going a little bit fast, but this is kind of a quick start guide. And if you want more in-depth stuff, go to uh, listen to the master over here on the uh, Legorhythmic YouTube channel, Wes McDermott. Uh, he's the best of the best. It doesn't get any better than him. And he's much, you know, he slows it down. He breaks it all down for you. Go step by step. There's a ton of really good videos in here. Uh, this is just for people who like to listen to my voice, I suppose. Uh, but certainly go over and listen to Wes McDermott as well. He's super awesome. So, um, let's go ahead and make some more materials, because it's so easy. But, I mean, you thought that was easy. It actually gets way easier than that. So if we go over here to our metallic mint green, you're going to see we have a bunch of nodes plugged in. I didn't even give this one a normal map node because there's no roughness. It's just basic metallic sheen mint green. Um, so I can go ahead and close this down. I don't need to see. This is, these are just the output nodes that it's using, so you can go ahead and move this down. Um, this is an unsafe package. I'm just going to, this is just kind of a test package. I'll just be throwing my materials I use in here. So let's go ahead and do a file, new substance. We'll go ahead and keep it physically based. Cool. Now let's make another material, only we're going to make it much, much easier. And how I'm going to do that is just go over here and choose, type in base ma base material, and uh, as I type that in, it's going to find what I'm looking for, and that's just base material. Now, what is a base material? If I click this node and drag it in here, that'll go ahead and load this node up, and if I take this material and go ahead and plug it into my outputs, boom, plugs right in. If I right click, maybe, you know, make sure view outputs in 3D, go to materials, so in here is where your materials are, and if, I should have probably mentioned this earlier, if your materials look weird and don't look like mine, make sure you go to materials, and default is just the name, the shader group name of the object. Um, go to shader and make sure you're cho you've chosen physically based metallic and roughness. Um, it, there are different, we're going to talk about this in a minute, but there are uh, other models, material models you can do, as well as if you want to bring in your own material you can uh, you can you can write your own material throw it in here go grab it and then you can do uh, clear coat iridescence subsurface scattering all sorts of cool stuff um, but we're just gonna keep it simple physically based metallic roughness and if there's a couple more viewport options we can do actually now that I'm in here let's go to geometry you can do a primitive list and you're gonna see I have a shader ball loaded in um, I don't remember off the top of my head where that directory is but I'll post it in the comments or something um, but you can bring in your own custom shader ball if you'd like, or you can just go through here and change this to a plane, high res cu uh, cube, hollow box, inner box, all that good stuff. But I like this rounded box, so this is what I'm going to keep. Uh, if you want to check out anything special with your material, like if you do have iridescence, clear coating, all that stuff, you can go to materials, default edit, and over here in your parameter view you'll see we have emissive intensity we can play with, uh, sRGB, scale, DirectX normal on or off, that's basically if you're using DirectX, DirectX or OpenGL, and you've also got tiling. Now you can't see this tiling update, but once we get stuff tiling I'm going to play around with that a little bit. Um, so let's go ahead and double click this base material here and we'll look at some of their parameters. So any node you double click it'll show you the parameters for that node, as well as your parent graph which I haven't really talked about yet, but it's back there. We'll get to it. Uh, so I'm going to double click this base material node here. And right now, this is just a plain Jane piece of metal. Um, actually, just so we don't get distracted, I'm going to go to display, uh, turn off grid, and then I'm going to go to scene edit. And there's a lot of things you can edit in your scene. The only thing I'm going to touch right now is visible and viewport. I'm going to turn off that background. There we go. Just nice, clean, uh, no background. So, double click the base material node and let's look at what's going on in here. Right now, uh, you can choose between a metal and roughness workflow or a spec and gloss workflow. We're going to stick with metal and roughness. And you got presets in here. So right now it's a set at custom. So with custom, I can go in here and choose a base color. So let's go ahead and choose like an orange. And you can also go in here and change the metallic metallicity of it. So gonna, it's all the way up in metallic. You know what? I'm going to make this one a plastic. So I'm going to bring the metallic all the way down. So we're going to make an orangey plastic. Yeah, if I want to go in here and change this orange, I can darken it up, desaturate it, make it a little more red, whatever you want to do. Uh, roughness is how shiny it is. So through here, you can make it super duper shiny, or you can make it super duper matte, more like a rubber. Um, we'll go ahead and keep it somewhat shiny. Now, grunge amount's interesting. It has a built-in grunge to it. So what does grunge mean? Well, if I hold down, let me see, it's been a while since I've been in here. I uh, don't know what happened there, but I just basically did a scene 
reset all, and then I had to go in here to materials, default shader, make sure physically base was plugged in, uh, go to display, turn off my grid, uh, go to scene, edit, go ahead and turn off visible and viewport, and then right click, view outputs in 3D view, and now I'm all set back up. And now when I hold down shift and move this around, that'll actually move the light around in my scene. Um, so there's that, you can kind of change where the light's falling in your scene so you can kind of see a little bit better um, how shiny it is and what this roughness is going to do. So I'm going to double click this node, sorry about that. And we're going to go to our grunge amount and I'm going to crank this up. And as I crank this up, you're going to see my, my um, plastic here, my shiny plastic is starting to get a little, little dirty looking, a little worn, a little scratched up. Um, kind of a little roughed up around the edges, and you can crank that all the way up, and I'll make it super rough and add more, and you can actually tile it more. So you might be wondering, how did they make a node that has all these parameters built in? You can build this node on your own if you want to. I'm going to show you a little bit of how to do it, not nothing this complex, but um, you can absolutely just start with, a, it's basically starting with a graph, uh, plugging it through a bunch of nodes, right clicking those nodes, exposing some parameters to the end user which you'll label and then it all gets output to this single node which I can drag in and then I can go here and play with all this cool stuff that they set up. If you ever want to see how a node is set up, incidentally, you can right click and just do what we did with our own node that we dragged in. Uh, open reference, say open, and here is the base material they set up. Now it looks a little bit you know, intense, but it's really, if you go through and kind of step through it, once you kind of get comfortable in Substance Designer, you're going to see, oh, they broke this up, you can double click these nodes, see what they exposed, uh, what all these outputs are set to, and then you can go back in here to your uh, graph right here, and you can see how it's updated in here. So, if we don't need to see this anymore, all we got to do is select this tab, close it, and then go back to our new graph. So we've messed with roughness, uh, we've messed with, or, I'm sorry, grunge on our roughness, and we can also mess with the roughness value with that grunge plugged in as well. So you can see we can make it super shiny with, uh, with some roughness in there, and you can make it super matte with some roughness in there, and the differences that that makes. So we'll go ahead and make it somewhat shiny. And we also have up here, we have the custom material preset that we were playing with. Uh, you can do dielectric, and that basically just means plastic. You're going to see metal disappeared. We don't, we don't get to play with metal anymore. Uh, if we go down here to gold, these are all the presets that make up gold. Now you're going to see my scene is getting really intense with some of that bling. I'm going to go to scene edit, and in these settings here, I'm going to scroll down until I see post effects. I'm going to go ahead and turn that to false, and that'll get rid of some of that lens flary stuff. Uh, so now that I've done that, I'm going to double click this base material again, and we're going to go through here. So here's our gold, and basically all these are are just, um, and you're going to see I don't have a base color anymore. It's plugging in the base color that gold uses based on scientific calculated values, um, and the somewhat correct roughness value, I guess, but you can go ahead and change that as well. It's available to you if you want a shinier gold or a more matte gold, and then you can grunge your gold up or not grunge it up. Uh, same thing with silver, aluminum, iron, copper, all the usual ones you see that have been meticulously uh, mathematically calculated, you can go ahead and grab one of those. If you want to start with a titanium, maybe rough it up a little bit. You know, here's kind of a matte titanium with a little bit of grunge on it. You can go ahead and call this. Uh, let's do it. Uh, let's go ahead and save this as desktop grungy titanium. And we'll go ahead and name the graph, hit F2, grungy titanium, go ahead and save this, yay. So now I can drag this in anywhere I want to, and it's good to go, it'll be called grungy titanium. Now when we right clicked and opened up this base material, it actually opened up this PBR base material um, node. If I don't want to see that anymore, I can just right click any of these, in fact you can control, right click all of these if you want to, but I'm just going to grab this last one and hit close. I don't need to see that anymore. So we've got our grungy titanium saved, we've got our unsaved package, this is just our test graph, so if I double click this one, it's going to uh, show us this one. So now if I want to drag in grungy titanium and go and plug this in, everything will plug in. And we had metallic mint green still plugged in to our ambient occlusion because I wonder if this one has one. I'm going to hit one to open up these and you're going to see, oh, this grungy titanium doesn't have an AO output. So if I go and right click here into open reference, um, if you wanted to, this thing does have an ambient occlusion output and a height one and a height output if you want as well. So you can actually go in here and do a, uh, another output. And again, we'll just, just real quick, AO, tab down, ambient 
Oh, sorry, I mean, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, we're going to go ahead and group it under material. And we're going to give it a usage. So we're going to go ahead and say, you are an ambient occlusion. So we can now drag this ambient occlusion in here. And it should actually update that automatically. So if we go into three, and uh, well, that's the output for the grungy titanium. So, I mean, this will plug in automatically now, though, too, because, you know, the base color does have ambient occlusion as its output. And then we save our grungy titanium. We go back to our new graph, which is our test graph here. Go ahead and gra run uh, grungy titanium back in here. Hit three to go into uh, collapse material mode. Drag that out. Everything plugs in nice. Um, now, there are, like I said, there are some materials that don't really play exactly nice with um, the metallic roughness uh, model, but you can actually get around that. Uh, if you go and you right click here, if you click one of these, you can actually right click and go view in 3D view, and you can actually tell it where do you want it to get plugged in. Now, you'll notice in here there is a specular level, and that is hard coded in there. Uh, if you want to change that specular level, uh, you can certainly do that. Let's go ahead and just do one more. New substance, okay, physically based. And for this one, uh, we'll just drag in another base material. Plug this one in. And I'm going to right click out, I'm going to spacebar click out here. Go ahead and do a new output. And for this usage, I'm going to give it that specular level. Let's go find that. So scroll down, specular level. And if I hit one in here. I don't have a specular level output, so I'm just going to have to make that on my own. Uh, specular level is going to be controlled. It's just an R, it's a grayscale uh, number. So if I spacebar, go in here and do uniform color, double click it, make it grayscale, and then plug that into my specular output. Uh, and then I right click this. Actually, let's right click out here and go view all outputs in 3D view. So now if I change this specular level, you're going to see it doesn't really do anything. That's because it's for dielectrics, I think. So I'm going to go over here to the base color, and I'm going to change, change metallic all the way down to black. So now that I've done that, uh, and just to kind of spice it up a bit, I'm going to take this base color, and I'm going to give it uh, something we don't have, like a blue. So we'll give it a base color of a blue. We'll give it a li little, little more roughness here. And now if I go down here to our specular level that we have plugged in. As I change this, you're going to see we can get a little bit more uh, of a range on our dielectric materials. So if you're wondering how do you kind of get those edge cases in your materials, that's how you can do that. So uh, let's go ahead and use this one. We'll call this one blue latex. Uh, save as desktop blue latex. And we'll name the graph. Cool. So now we've got some materials going, and they're super easy to make. You saw how easy it was. Um, now for blue latex, let's have a little bit more fun with it. Let's give it a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, we'll give it some bump, we'll give it some roughness, and we'll kind of play around with those a little bit. So if we want to do a little bit of bump on this thing, what I'm going to do is do that through the normal map. Now I can go in here and double click this, and I can do a user defined map. And if I want to do a user defined height, I can change that to true. And then if I go in here, I'm going to click under generators. I'm going to click noises. And what that's going to do is just give me a whole bunch of noise patterns in here. I'm going to go and find a really obvious one. There's one. Pavement one. I'm going to grab this one. So if we double click pavement one and we kind of back out, you're going to see um, that it looks like pavement. Now, if you want to see this thing tiling, and I'm actually using my mouse wheel to scroll over here in the 2D view. If I hit space bar, do it. There we go. Um, that will actually show you that it's tiling. If I hit spacebar again, it'll get rid of the tiling. So you can kind of see that updated on the fly. And you have one parameter. If you double click pavement, you can change the roundness. You can make it super round this way, not round at all this way. So we'll make it, you know, we'll make it pretty round. And if I plug this into the height, what that's going to do is change this. It's going to convert this height to a normal and then make that normal map output to the uh, material. Now, how did it do that? Well, if you want to do it manually, any black and white image you want, you can actually cl click the spacebar and choose normal. Now, this normal is looking for a grayscale input. If you try and put a color in here, it's going to holler at you. For example, if we take this base color and we try it, oops, let's go ahead and do it backwards. We'll do this input and do it from a base color. It's going to say, 
nope, I'm not going to do it. It turned red, and then it says, you know what? I'll help you out a little bit. I will put a grayscale converter on the end of your base color, so it's going to go from blue. If I double click on this grayscale converter node, you'll see it's now gray. Now it lets me plug it in. Sometimes it'll just be a red line. It's going to be like, you plug me in. I don't know what to do. I'm broken. You got to fix me. Um, or sometimes Substance will kind of help you out and give you a node that you need. In this case, it was a grayscale converter node. Uh, if you want to see this thing a little clearer, you can hit D. This is basically a docked node. So if you click it and hit D, that'll undock the node here. And if again, if you click it and click D, it'll actually dock it back up. So we may dock some nodes while we're here. Um, so basically, a grayscale converter node, I think, is in here. Yeah, so if you hit spacebar and to go to grayscale conversion, you can bring in your own grayscale converter node if Substance is going to give you one. But we don't want to do that. That was just an example, so I'm going to delete that. What we're going to do is take this height map, drag this grayscale image into normal, and then if we double click this normal here, you're going to see, oh, it's a normal map. Now, it looks kind of weird because it's got an alpha on. If you go to your 2D area and click this little alpha button off, that'll unenable the alpha image. Now, there's a couple things you can do in here. And in fact, if you want to actually see this updating, I'm going to take this normal and actually replace the one that's going through here. So uh, we'll go ahead and right click here and do view outputs in 3D view just to make sure it's updating. Zoom in. And if we play around with these settings, so if we go from uh, DirectX to OpenGL, you're going to see they kind of flip. These ones look, I'm going to say inverted, so you can go between DirectX and OpenGL on your normal map and you can see that updating in the 2D view. Uh, but also what you can do is go into Materials, Default, Edit, and in here you can also change this to DirectX or OpenGL. So if this is DirectX true, probably this should be DirectX as well. Um, you can change the intensity of your normal mouse, you can really crank it up, or you can make it just kind of subtle. Kind of up to you. Um, and that's about all you can do in this thing. And then it goes and gets it plugged into your normal map. Uh, I'm going to go back to materials and edit. And I'm actually going to play around with tiling on the material. So this isn't actually using like a tiling 2D node, which we can get into. Um, but I'm actually tiling it on the material. So if you want to display any material on your object and kind of see how it tiles, just go ahead and crank that tiling up.